know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am excited. What's going on, Harry? You ready to rock and roll? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. And I'm having a tough time keeping these alligators down. It's difficult. But it's not pimping easy. Ain't, pimping ain't easy unless you practice. Uh, we got a special show. Here's, and I know I've said that a thousand times before but this time i mean it i mean this is going this one is going to be one for the books um this is my boy us uh, uh on everything uh star star talk uh the the view the fucking good morning man, all kinds of shit uh radio person a good friend of mine man been, been, we've been friends for a long time give it up for chuck nice y'all give it up for chuck Yo. nice boom what boom up, boom what up what up uh, 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 uh base philip alumni uh man school <laughs> uh neophyte <laughs> it's good to have you chuck what's going on baby oh man you know you're the only person it's so funny because uh harry sent me an email <laughs> I was reading the email, right? Let me pull it up. I just got to read this because it's hilarious. It's <laughs> oh, hilarious. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, thanks so much for doing it. You know, um, if you're not familiar, you know, here's what the show's about. Uh, and then it says, we do uh, about 75 minutes. And I wrote that. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my children can't get 75 minutes from me. Well, we do we do a little we get in deep on behind the scenes on the Patreon. So we're going to do and then whatever. So that's why you got to sign up for the Patreon, y'all, and uh, support us because we've been supporting y'all for eight years. Um, but so we were just talking about bikes a little while ago. I just yes. bought, I just bought the Ducati Duval uh, X Duval that's with the forward man. controls. Um, flat black, of course, because yeah. um, <laughs> yes. it's angry. Yeah. <laughs> you you, I, you actually went to the dealership. You can you make it blacker? Is it, it's, it's all black, sir. I mean, like, so, like, is there anything yeah, you could do? Yes. What about like, actually, these screws? There is, there is a blacker. Believe yeah. it or not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The S, the, uh, one of the S. The, but you know, I, I almost bought the Lamb Lamborghini Limited. Really? You know, they got a, my my of my bike. Harry, right. can you bring that up real quick? No. Can you? Um, mm, let's see. No. Here, I'll try. All right, but I, try. I just bought it, and the then answer I'm, I'm is yes. But why is really my question? Because we need it, to see it. We Lamborghini <laughs> Limited. <laughs> it's a Lamborghini uh, D U V Ducati D U V I A L. Uh, I actually didn't. You know what? Just show mine. Just show mine. Why not? Just show mine. Mine is the. Uh, the By the way, the, um. The Lamborghini is yeah. hot. It's hot as I don't know what, man. Yeah, they only made uh, six hundred of them. Yeah, they got one down in a dealership, and they and it says, "Please do not touch." Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, the gr it's the green one, right? The green one. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, got yeah. it in the dealership, and it says, "Please yeah. do not touch." Do not this sit. Is, this is what's crazy. Okay, that's the Lambo one on the right. Yeah, that's it. Hit that. Yeah. Now mine is the one. What's uh? Go to the the, the all black. Uh, just I, I think it's one right there, Harry. To the, underneath the one you just clicked on, or is that one green too? 
Now that one's mine. Yeah, that's mine without that's the red. That's it. Without, without the red. Without the red uh, framing. That's yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all blacked out. That's but, super hot, man. You can't get hotter than that. Yeah, and it's a big, it's a big boy bike. Big oh, no, boy that's, bike. That's it, baby. That's what it's about. And right it's there, got man. the forward controls. Yeah, uh, so you could kind of stretch out like yeah, a Harley. It's, it's like a, it's like a hog the way it rides. Yeah, but it don't but, ride but it like, don't a ride hog, like a baby. hog. Because <laughs> you will, you will blow them. You blow them off the ass. Oh, and it's that. so it's so balanced and it's so talky that V twin yeah, is uh, yeah. I'm 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 trying to get this this 600 miles in. I didn't know you ride. Did you pick it up? Did you pick yours up? Let's go yeah, ride man. it. I, I got it, man. I I picked it up, man. I I bought it. That I walked out the dealership with it that day. I you know as well. They don't know for y'all listening. Uh, Dante and I were talking about because I was at the Ducati dealership and I was about to you know just drop drop a Ducati and be like, screw it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I've always wanted to try them since I was like in my twenties. And yeah, you yeah. know, I was like, I'm gonna buy a Triumph. Right, and, right. Um, you know, I just wanted that vintage, you know, yeah, yeah, that, that vintage the, the look and that cafe that, rock, that cafe, cafe racer racy. type. It's, you know, anyway, long story short, um they How had long this, ago? How long ago? I don't know, a few weeks ago. So you are we just we right in the game, man. Right I, in the same, yep. So, I, did you just so you didn't break it in yet? Nah, nah. I'm, How many I'm, miles you got on it? I don't know, maybe 300, 350. Yeah. Oh, you better than me. I just picked mine up this week. I bought it, but I because it was raining and everything. But yeah, you got, I gotta put like 600 on. So, let's let's hook up, man. Let's make this do a ride. Yeah, man, we could do that. Shoot, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm get, I'm I'm casual with it. You know what I mean? I, I'm not going anywhere. I just get out. You know, I'm like maybe get on the Palisades or something and get up. Let's do know? that, man, because yeah. I got to put some miles on. I, I mean, we can't open it up till you break it in anyway. So we just I, I, they're going to be mad at me because I'm, <laughs> I'm unseating rings and everything because I'm ah, I'm, not, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm I'm screwing up because, you know, you're not supposed to do that. You are not supposed to push the uh, push the bike at all for yeah. the first 500 miles. So, but yeah. I, yeah. I, listen, it's been so long since I've ridden. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I got carried away a couple of times, man. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not bad. You got to get the revs up and then as long as you drop them back down. So yeah. anyway, um, but it's so dope, dope because it's funny. It's uh, Harry, I don't know if you see, but me and, me and Chuck got the same chair. We got the same chair. <laughs> we just both bought a bike. Nice. You started talking about to me luggage. I was like, well, I, I, I carry to me luggage. <laughs> so this is the thing. Ha Harry's like not... A black yeah. space race that you guys are uh, <laughs> competing in, and we didn't even know. But we didn't know any of this need. stuff about. We didn't know that either of us had any of this. I didn't stuff. even know Chuck rode bike. Right until That's just true. now. Is this the yeah. first one, Chuck, or no? No, no, no. no oh, okay. No. I was gonna say no, it's yeah, Ducati, not, you That's had a, rough to be the first one. What yeah. was your first bike? What was your first bike that you learned on? I had uh, what with nine nine. Oh, the first bike I learned on was a Seika. So I okay. had a Yami. I, I had a Yami Seika. That was that was my first. Bike. And then I went from that to the red duck. Uh, I got the red ducky nine. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And uh, and then after that, um, I'm I came to New York and I was like, mm, I don't even know if there's yeah. like, I don't even know if I need this. So yeah, yeah. I I went back to Philly to get the bike and it was gone. Wow. And I I said, well, that's God telling me that I don't need to have my bike. Right, 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 right. Because yeah. I mean, not Damn. only was it gone, but they did the thing where they take the kryptonite lock and they hit it with the free, uh, not the free, free arm. It's yeah, the, it's the, the free arm. Yeah, the free arm, yeah. and then they and they clack it. And it was Break still it. it was still on the pole. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they lifted up the whole thing and took it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I was like, all right, well, look, so I'm gonna let it go. You know what I mean? I put the insurance claim in and I said, all right, that's it. I learned on a 50. Okay. I learned so you, on the X, was, X. Yeah, I was a kid. You was, I was, you was you've been riding your whole life. Then. Yeah, like I remember I learned I was like uh about 15, 13, 15. I ran I learned on an XL50 okay. uh dirt bike. And then I went to a Kawasaki KE 100 mm -hmm. Then I had an interceptor. I okay. started at three with the Mattel, right? The Mattel. Yeah, Mattel uh, I had a <laughs> The power no, wheels. No, the Fisher Price. It was a Fisher Price. Fisher Price. Yeah, it was a motorcycle shaped like a phone, and the eyes went up and down. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that shit was badass back in the day. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I went from an intercept. I stopped riding for a while, and then I started riding again when the booster came out. The Hayabusa, the the 
1999 was the first year was over 200 miles per hour. Yeah, that high boost was it was like it it shook the yeah. world. Yeah, that yeah, that I did I did 196 on that bike. I I believe it. So yes, a, a buddy of mine got one. I was up around 160. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, four o'clock on 95, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I was going up to Marcus Dairy up and up when everybody used to run up to the dairy farm. Yeah, and I did that run, and then I, then I got a, I, I got a V Max. Okay. I had a V Max. That's when I got. I was like, I wanted to kind of calm down, but I don't know why you would. I got a, a V Max. You can't see now. That says <laughs> that says that should tell everybody everything they need to know about you. Yeah, I'm gonna calm okay. down and get a V Max. Yeah, right? I'm gonna calm down and calm get down. a V Max. <laughs> <laughs> then I did a V Max. Which basically, for the for, for those of you who are uninitiated, a V Max is a motorcycle with a truck engine in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like throwing a brick. <laughs> <laughs> then I did a I did a uh, I did a, a Warrior Yamaha Warrior a Muscle Cruiser. Nice. Then I did a. You're muted, bud. I lost you. You're muted. Dante, you muted yourself. I think here. I did a, yeah. a I did a booster, another booster. I wow. went down on the booster and fucked myself up bad. Road rash, uh, dislocated my thumbs, broke a rib, sprained my ankle, and uh, and I rode the bike home like a fucking maniac. And uh, it was, that's a Harry. That's when I tell you about ice. Like I I I'm such a firm believer about ice. Like I fell on a Friday, hmm. and I did um. At the time, I, I think my pops had passed already. So my mom's, I was, I, you know, I was, I was taking care of my mom, and uh, she, I remember, I came upstairs, and as I was limping up the stairs, it started swelling up. So as I, I had to cut my jeans off, yeah. and then I laid in the bed uh, with ice packs on me, twenty four seven from Friday to Sunday. I iced my knees and my joints and stuff. Um, and I, I, I remember my, when I got up, I, I, I went right on Essex street, went down, beached out. The bike slid about a hundred feet. I slid about 35 feet and I, I was stopped sliding and I'm looking at the bike. Just gets, 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 gets. I pick it up, I ride it home. I iced myself for four days late. I was walking by Monday because I had to put the bike on a, on a, on a, on a flatbed to, to get it fixed. And then I, then I did a, then I got to do, I bought a American Eagle chopper, which I still have a hard tail. And then I bought a Ducati 212. Wow. And then I blew that, I, uh, the, that I went down on that one, but I didn't get hurt, but I fucked up the bike. And now I got the Ducati. So I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, I think this is going to be my last one. I think I, well, yeah, you I'll say sh- that now. Yeah. No, uh-uh. no, forget it. Don't even say it. You know, I mean, who are you trying to fool? After yeah. that, after you just gave us your whole bike. I know. You gave us your whole bikeography, and you ended with, and I think this is gonna be my last one. Yeah. My last he one. gave yeah. us his yeah. motorcycle IMDb. Yeah. Right? Like, I think I'm out. That's, that's like Prince saying, "Yeah, this is the last song I'm going to write." Last song. Uh, uh-uh. yeah. Um, <laughs> what's funny is Chuck. Chuck's my dog. I don't see him nearly enough, but whenever I see him. I, I I have a really warm and good feeling about it. And in a way, and I don't know if, if, if I don't know what episode Chuck was on, but we had a ball yeah. last time you were here. We were in studio before COVID. Yep. Uh, I think we might have been drinking McAllen when you were here. We probably had some McAllen probably, going. Well, that's what I drink, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um... Uh, yeah, but we, we always talk and Chuck always disagrees with me, but doesn't. It's, it's a weird thing. We always are disagreeing, but not disagreeing. Yes. I mean, I think that we, I'm not sure how it works out, but like you say things differently than I do. (laughs) Harry can get it. That sums it up. That about sums up the relationship with Dante. You know, it's like. I'm not necessary. I can't really say like, well, you're wrong because you're not, mm. but you just say things differently. You know, I think it's kind of like, you know, we're definitely looking at the exact same thing. Right. It's just that the way I describe it is different from the way you describe it. But right. we both agree. Yeah. What we're looking at, you at know, the base at the base. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe little son will split in. So we're going to we're going to work out those. split. But here's what's funny. I think truck 
I, I mean, I mean, I think Chuck always thought we were at such opposite ends of. I, I think initially you thought that. I did because you know you're a little you know you're you're a bit radicalized, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I did, but you know, the more I listened to you, you know, when we would have we would get into conversations where we see each other at the club, you know, as I listen, I'm like, well, you know, Chuck, you did that. Yeah. And, and well, you know, that's how you. And so I don't know. I mean, like as you would uh, describe situations, I'm like, well, yeah, I, I kind of handle things the exact same way. Right. But then when we talk about the philosophy behind it, right. then I feel like, well, no, I, I no, I don't look at it that way. But clearly, I must look at it that way because my actions we're, we're the same. kind of line up in the same the same as your actions. So, you know, and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. I'm like. Well, it's funny because Harry, like when me and Harry really start vibing, Harry was like, I'm not, I don't handle it like you. And I and I would be yeah. like, I don't want you to handle it like me. Like I want, I just want you to understand the underlying principle and then apply it in a way in in the most optimum way in the context of where where you're comfortable yeah because for me i always i came from the place of i'm not as aggressive i was and i still am not as aggressive as dante is but that doesn't that doesn't mean well, i can't be firm in what i want i was right? going to say a lot yeah, of, you don't have a to be lot aggressive. of dudes a lot of dudes um confuse mm -hmm. aggression and assertion Right, exactly. A lot of dudes uh, confuse aggression and assertion. You, you can be an aggressive dude, and that might work for you if that's who you are naturally. You know, I tend to be a bit more, or I used to be a lot more, I would say, aggressive. But, you know, I, I have a couple cats that I used to run with, and um, I would call them, you know, assertive. They were extremely laid back, but mm -hmm. we were always... Right. Doing the exact same thing. Right, right. Thinking about it on the exact same page. But, you know, I was somebody who was like, yo, watch this. Like, right. that's that's an aggressive guy. That, right, that's right. who I was. Right, right. Whereas the assertive guy might just be like, hmm, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to see if this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, perhaps this will be my approach. Like, it's not as, you know, it's not as... I I always looked at it as, uh, you know, uh, like uh, in a work situation, there's ways, two ways to fire people. You can fire somebody and yell, you're a fucking idiot. Get the fuck out of here. You're fired. Right. Or right. you can just go, listen, uh, it's, it's not, not working, working out. out. You're right. fired. Right. I got to let you go because you're not doing what right. you needed to do. And one, and one is you. definitely one is definitely aggressive, you know, that, you know, and but they're both. See, here's the thing. The person's fired. Right, 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 exactly. Right. That's the point. That's the point. You don't need to yell. Like right. it accomplishes the same goal. Right. Well, I mean, here's the thing, Harry, and I mean, I mean, Harry's watched me even evolve in ways. I mean, we've both both watched each other evolve. I think, I, I, Harry, would you say that I'm calmer now, or no? Well, maybe not. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I well. Or is it? Is it that you see? What I what I see. So here, here's the way I would explain it. So when you say you got a beef with let's so let's say you got a beef with somebody. Right. Nobody really wants to smoke. Like, be, be, I mean, if I got a beef with somebody, I don't really want a phys physical altercation. Right. right. So but what happens amongst regular people is you say something, I say something, you say something, I say Escalation. something, you escalate. And then we're but we're both hoping that we can find the off ramp. Right. Like we're both regular dudes want to find the off ramp so that we can de-escalate. But when it you escalate, I escalate. Boom, 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 boom. At the top of that is some kind of physical altercation. Right. Right. Um, so I think what I've done, it, I'm much I do more with less. So when the, when it, the, there's a You'll bump uh, it up. You'll bump it up real quick to. Well, yeah, I don't. Like I'm not doing the twelve steps. Yeah, yeah. We, if we're going, if it's it, like this, You're this like, is. Let's get, here. let's get to it. If we go, let's get to it. it. So, so You'll look, get to look, step three. So it's you. You're being disrespectful. Yeah. What the fuck you want to do? 
I'm not doing this, doing this. I'm not that I want that, but if let's get it, we're going to get it. We go now. As soon as you I go, listen, I, I've also gone. We could de-escalate this. But if you really want to rock like this, we let's rock. Right? right. But not let's rock 20 steps ahead. Let's do it now. So when the guy doesn't take the opportunity to kind of talk, then I hit him in the mouth. Because right. because I've given we, we you're looking for the for the de-escalation. You're looking for the off ramp. I'm giving it to you and you've decided to keep escalating. So ultimately, my assumption is that it's going to get there anyway. So now you don't have to wonder what my what my what my next step was. My next step was punching you in the mouth. Now you got to Now, if you really wasn't about that life, you're going to go like, oh, shit, I was punching, it's over. Now right. it's, it's usually over anyway, because you didn't want to smoke anyway. And I don't want to smoke, but I just I can see where it's going. I can I can see I, I, it's like the Matrix. Like I can see the whole picture and I'm going I, I don't, I'm not going, I don't, I don't, I, I, you know, we were talking about this the other day. I'm 55 years old. I've seen more sunsets than I'm going to see. I don't have time. If this is going to go down, let's uh, then let it go down. If, if we can, if we can deescalate and kind of talk like men and, and be rational, I'm, I'm always with that, but I'm also, I'm okay with the smoke, you right. know, but I'm not going to dabble and waste time with this. And so I think that is what makes me look like I'm a fucking maniac. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> because they don't see. I don't think but you they will see do that <laughs> also, not just in physical altercations, but Everything. in conversations where a stranger or even when you teach comedy classes, right? Yeah. Yeah. You'll do the thing. You'll go. That's too long. That's no good. Why are you doing that? Why are you talking about that? Which is uncomfortable because there is no compliment sandwich of like that was good. <laughs> but blah, blah, blah. You'll However, that's a wonderful thing in comedy because, quite frankly, if if you're going to be a comedian, you're supposed to do that to yourself. Right, brief. Okay? Right. You're supposed to do that to yourself. You supposed right. to, you're supposed to you're supposed to look at your set and go, that sucked. This sucked. I got to do this. So to have somebody tell you the truth about your set, right. if you're really going to be a comedian, you you got to love and respect that person for because they're helping you, and you yeah. realize that. Right. You know. Um, so that's a good thing. Now but it'll do it in relationships too. I was about to say. Yeah, now where it becomes it. a problem is like what my wife tells me because I often speak to people. She says you don't know how to talk to people, and I'm like, no. I just said what was on my mind, and it was true. So give like, me give me an example. All right, let me think of the last time that it happened. Let me give you an example. All right, okay. So I'm at a bar. There's a guy, we're talking, okay? He's very disrespectful. Um, I could just tell as his general demeanor, right. he's a disrespectful guy. Yeah. I could tell by the way he's talking to the other people. And he's, a, and he's accustomed to being disrespectful. He's very and people, accustomed. people and he are, com are comfortable with it. Right, and he, I, he clearly has money. You know what I mean? I mean, people knew who he was. And we start talking. I don't agree with anything that he's saying. All right. And he's wrong about a couple of things that are scientific. Mm -hmm. And you know what my background is when it comes to science. And okay? you hang out with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So <laughs> like, exactly. like this, that's your right. man. Exactly. If you got a question about black holes, you call him direct. Exactly. And so the deal is and not only him, but all the people that he hangs around. Right. And so yeah. the thing is about scientists is um, they don't suffer bullshit because <laughs> Because that's the whole idea of science. Right. Science gives you the ability to to recognize and do away with bullshit. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking to the guy. He's wrong about a bunch of stuff. But I'm. What was the conversation? If you don't give it to give context. Um. It it it, it had something to do with you know the virus and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So I'm you know I was just letting him talk because I'm like okay and then he's talking government stuff too and I'm like fine you know. Conspiracy, so, right. politics. Well, not, not really conspiracy, but just uh, like how the government is overstepping its bounds and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Right? And so, you know, I'm just asking questions. I'm like, you know, well, um, do you think it's because of this? 
or do you think it's because of blocking? Which is the Socratic method. You're asking him questions uh, asking. to reveal. Because he because while you're pouring that cement around his feet, he has no idea and it's getting hard <laughs> as we as we speak. <laughs> the concrete is hardening up and he has no idea that he's getting set up. But go ahead, continue. Right. <laughs> so anyway, um he, we get to a point where I kinda I kind of have them cornered, right. but Sun Tzu, Art of War. When right. somebody's cornered, that's when they're most dangerous. Right. Okay. So you know, if you're not going, if you're not going to take them out, <clears throat> let them save face. Let yeah. that person save right. face. Okay. Unless you're going to cut them off at the knees and take them out, then what you need to do is you need to be a bigger person, back up, realize that that person is cornered, and give them the opportunity to get out of this situation mm -hmm. and save face. Right. Which I did. And he wouldn't let and it. And which he wouldn't let it happen. Right. And then he started talking about how I was like his wife. Okay. It's never like a great the way start that I to a comparison. What's that? It's never you, mean the, you mean the person that blows him and fucks <laughs> him? You, well, so, I, didn't even, I, I didn't even consider but that I, part. I, I, but I'm saying the mentality of that, the deeper mentality is even to make that comparison. Right. You should is, never, right. Don't ever compare me to your fucking yeah, wife. Anyway, yeah. that's when I had it, right? Mm. And so I said to him, first of all, don't ever compare me to your wife because, quite frankly, um, you and I don't have any relationship. I mm. don't know you and you don't know me. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I can let you know right now that your wife is a very unhappy person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I started to tell him exactly why his wife was unhappy. Right. And when I finished, he looked at me and he said, hey, man, that is just wrong on every level. What you just did is fucked up. Right. It's fucked up and it's wrong. And I went just like this. I understand that but it is also true. Mm -mm. And then I sat there like, all right, now is where you try to make a move on me and I'm gonna right. fucking pick up this glass and I'm gonna punch you, I'm gonna punch right. you with a glass. That's right. what, I don't fight. You right, know, right. I'm too small, mm. I, I don't fight, okay? Right. But right. I will punch a motherfucker with a glass. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Right, because anyway, um, he It's a good up. life hack, that's a good life hack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You don't know how to fight. I don't know how to fight, but I will punch him. Here's with a great fight. hack, guys. Yeah. Hit a guy with a glass. <laughs> you, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It yeah. takes them off guard. They don't know what to do. You may uh. not cut their face, though. And if you do, that's a felony charge. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it will create a lot of problems in your life. But the best yeah. thing to always do is to walk away from every situation. That is always the best thing to do. Right. Always. OK, but if somebody won't let you punch you with a glass, right. anyway, long story short, he got up, he paid his bill. Right. And he walked out. And then the waitress came over to me, a uh, bartender, not waitress. Yeah. Uh -huh. bartender came over to me and she said, damn, Chuck, that was harsh. And thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's, a, here's what I'm saying, the similarities of me and Chuck. What I just described about the escalation of it is the same thing. It's the same thing. The difference is I would. So you take in so much. There's a subtext. And I, I talk about this when you're talking to women, when you're talking to men in business and in, in, in comedy and in, in there's always this subtext. True. So for me, when I look at a guy is disrespect, like like you'll watch this guy it, for me in my ton of vision, because I'm already analyzing this. Here's a guy who's disrespectful. Here's a he's disrespectful to the bartender. He's disrespectful to the people around him. He'll usually be loud and boisterous. His movements will not be measured. Even his body language will not be measured in the sense that because he don't think he can get punched in the fucking mouth, even if it's emotionally punched in the mouth. So right. here's a guy who's vulnerable on all levels. You are plotting against this motherfucker the whole time. <laughs> you have, uh, you know, you know where he lives. <laughs> you know who he is. You even know what kind of child he was, a very insecure child who needed this boisterousness and this loud to fool people into thinking he was more confident. 
He, you know what his marriage is. You know why his wife is unhappy. You never met her, but you know all of this. And so th you can pretty much what I, ca I call it's like a personality equation. It's like, like, you know, how when you had linear equations, you plug in for X and you plug in for Y, you, you plug in three points and then you put the points and then you, you make sure the points intersect. So once you have all of this information, you know where this is going. I would have known that that was good, that it was only a matter of time till he was going to be disrespectful. And and so I'm not and I don't care what other people think. I know it was going to happen. Right. So when people go, oh, that was too harsh. It's like, Doug, he was getting, I, I would have been like, he was getting ready to tell me I'm like his wife. And you go, well, how the fuck? And so it makes me look crazy because I'm going, you like, how the fuck could you know he was going to, he didn't say that. He didn't say, he didn't even, I didn't even know he was married. Yeah, but I knew. I knew he was married because I already saw the ring on his finger or I saw the tan on his finger be, that, that he's hiding the ring because he's trying to back other the Do you know what I mean? Like, so there's so much, it's sort of like that show. It doesn't even have to be that specific. You just know this is going to a territory that I do not want it to go to. Like, right. this is just going to be an insulting territory. This is going to a territory where I'm coming out on the short end here and I just don't want to deal with it. Like, it doesn't and, even yeah, have to I be mean, that specific. And, and guess what? I'm, I'm, listen, I, you know, first of all, normally I would have never talked to the guy. Uh, the fact is, uh, you know, I mean, both of you guys know. Um, if if I'm out drinking, I become a lot more social. Right, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And I'll talk to anybody. Right, right. I made the mistake. I made the mistake of talking to this guy. Right, right, right. And in the moment that I saw, like, okay, this guy, you know, it's like when you when you give a heckler attention. Right. Uh, it's like there sometimes you can give a heckler attention because they're not a malicious right. attention whore who right. not only they're wants having a good time. Right. And they just don't understand the etiquette. Exactly. And you know the difference when you're on stage between the malicious attention whore who is an angry person who would love to fuck up your show. Yeah. They would love it. Right. And the person who is having a good time and just doesn't know any better. Right, right. You, I don't know how you know it, but you know it, okay? Right, right. And, and guess what? The person who's just having a good time, like, you can ignore them a little bit and they'll get the message. You can or spank them or you give them a little spanking. You can, give a little, you can give them a little of that, yeah, right? Yeah. The other person, you gotta yeah. murder, you gotta murder that motherfucker. Yeah. You yeah. gotta murder them. Yeah. You know, yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta take them, get some lime and a shovel and make a shallow grave and yeah. and make them dig it first. <laughs> right, 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 right. And then right. put them in it. And now like, you crying because right. I'm making you dig your own grave <laughs> and you know you sorry. And I, but I but the thing is, I've I have like and it's funny because Harry has been counseling dudes like his own friends and stuff like that. And he'll go and he he what happens if you've seen the pattern so much, what is the the cross section of the body of work, the case studies, like when you when you're doing stand up, you've been doing it so long. You 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 know, you say you don't know it, but it's not that you don't know it. It's that it becomes so much like breathing yeah. that you can't not know it. It's yeah. so it's blatantly a, obvious. It's a secondary association with that it's, it becomes yeah. subconscious you recognize it on a subconscious level without even consciously having to recognize it right. you have right. already identified it subconsciously and you know what's going to happen <laughs> so you can and, and, see it yeah i can right. see it all the time and you can see it in just body languages between couples you can see an interaction that takes place 30 seconds and you know like this is dysfunctional right yeah. here because this shouldn't be happening now yeah. I'm, I'm watch. I'm literally watching Harry being better, getting better at 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 figuring it out. Like he figures it out earlier. Sure, yeah. But Last even year. when he kicks it to me, I go, "Yeah, you're right on." But I'll go. I'll go ten steps behind before him. So so for instance, I I you know. Say a guy's trying to talk to a girl and she's he he'll you know, she's being obnoxious and he's got enough confidence to say, like, if she's being obnoxious, he doesn't say nothing. There's there's an outcome to that. But if she's being obnoxious and he goes, listen, you know, th this is you know, look, I don't want to waste. He'll go. I don't want to waste your time. 
and I don't want you to waste my time. And so if you don't want to be here, I, I, you, I totally get it. We could just, we could just stop. We could stop here and, right. and I, we go our separate ways right now. Here's the thing. And I, and the, I've used this example several times because I don't even say I don't want to waste your time because I don't give a fuck about your time. I'm just <laughs> I'm just meeting you. But why do we say I don't want to waste your time? You say I don't want to waste your time because it softens the fact that you're an empathetic person. And so I don't want to waste your time. I, but you really are saying this bitch is awful and I don't want to waste my time. But the authenticity and the truth of that is really where I go first. Listen, you're wasting my time and I'm, I'm good. Or even the step before that is just I'm good. What do you mean? I'm good. I'm leaving. What, what do you mean you're leaving? I, I don't I don't I don't like you. <laughs> I, I, this, I don't do awkward. I don't like you and I don't want to do this. And what happens is I think when you go back the steps before it's escalated, when you see it quicker, I think you actually change people in a way because it's so abrupt that you 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 slam the brakes on and they're so it makes them look at themselves in a real way when you go if now now I don't I, I won't you don't even deserve an explanation now I'm a, I'm a human being and I'm civil so if you ask me why then I go you're selfish you're disrespectful you don't know how to act I, I pick I went to pick you up you were late I go when I when you were late you didn't even apologize about being late. I let that go. I let this go. And so I I can already see that you the person, you the person going to take a shit in my house and leave a shit stain in my toilet and then leave it there and it's going to be and, and it's going to be fine. Yeah. And, By the and way, I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry that, that I didn't mean to do that, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. And you know what? I would I'm good enough now in reading it that I know when somebody, I know the difference when somebody just doesn't have the cooth and when somebody is just deliberately you know just wrecking shit because you can wreck shit and so becomes it because it's so obvious to me and other people don't see it my response is to who at the core who they are which maybe because other people have not read that or they haven't they haven't come up with that answer i look like i'm being abrupt hmm. wow i mean yo man that's that's kind of hard to um to refute in any way, because I mean that that, that makes a lot of sense. That's a salient point you're making. You know, yeah. I, I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's but just, I mean, it's listen, the steps when, before. Yeah, and and honestly, when it comes to dating, yeah, uh, you're spot on because um, the truth is that you know when you are wasting your time. Right. Every guy knows right. when you are wasting your time. Now, I used to be in sales. We call this spinning your wheels. Mm. Okay, it's a customer that pretends like they're gonna do something. And they ain't gonna so do well it. knowing they ain't gonna do nothing. Right, right. Okay, it's not like they're sitting on the fence and they might or might not make right. a decision for or against. These people knew when they walked in that they were window shopping. Right, right. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? We're just window shopping, man. I'm just letting you know I wouldn't waste my time over here. Mm. That's what I do when I walk into a store. Right, right, right. Because I know you're which, working on which, which also is, see, so going one step beyond that. What's what's behind that? This is a guy who respects other people's time and and is going. Listen, I'm just window. That's the guy who will buy the fuck the buy the fucking triumph because he already if he commits to it, he's going to commit to it. And it's true because that's exactly how I walked out of that triumph dealership. <laughs> With the bike, the dude, he wasn't even trying to sell me because he had, he, he, he actually thought there was no way in hell I was right. buying a bike that day, especially since I told him I already had a down payment on a Ducati right, right, over right. at Manhattan Ducati. Okay? Right, right, right. So he's looking at me like this dude is in here wasting my time. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm looking at the bike. I'm looking, I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. I'm this, I'm doing that. I, I sit on it. I put my wife on the back of it. I was like, let me see if this can, you know, and I got up and I was like, you know, I always wanted the Triumph. Write it up. Let's take the Triumph. And he went like this. He went like this. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Like I said, if I'm walking into a store and a dude that comes over, hey man, how you doing? I'm like, hey man, I'm just window shopping. You know what I mean? If you work on commission, don't waste your time with me. Cause you're <laughs> somebody who go, right? And so everybody- and, and, and the good salesman will go, listen, I, there's nobody here. What are, you, what are you looking at? What are you, and right. you- Oh, now let me tell you something. See, Dante, this is why I love you, man. You're a wise dude, this, man. That's this, but this is what I'm saying. You always think we're so, and we're so not. I In know. fact, I'm, I'm, I'm where you are. It's just, it, it the, the, the assumption is that my abruptness is, is, rah, but it's, it's very I see, I know intense. It's not. I know, but see, here's the thing. I want to convince myself that somehow I am not. <laughs> That's the real deal. I, but I, I don't think that you are. I think that you're very intentful. I think I, I am. I think I, I just think that the two or three steps and I say now Harry's different in that Harry is like we've been around each, so much, each other so much that Harry, if I go like Harry, don't if he don't see it, he'll go. All right, buddy. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah. He'll go. I don't see it, but this dude you're is seeing it. Yeah, yeah. I gotta it, trust your judgment. I gotta it. trust. Yeah. It's. I've seen it too many times. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. I gotta so, trust. If you're saying it is, I might not see it from my end, but I go. If that's how you're feeling, I gotta trust that that's what's going down. Yeah. Right. Not reckless with your decisions yeah, or analysis. I don't want to waste my time i don't want to waste my time <clears throat> and I, I don't really give a fuck about your time i mean i do in in a civil sense but i my happiness is most important and if i don't know you as a stranger that doesn't mean i, I have to be uncivil or uncivilized what it means is that you have not earned the right for me to be concerned about your time yep. you know and and that's a, that's a right that you earn and that's something that's the subtext that we communicate that guys communicate to women up front and that's what what's crazy about this just like the sale the guy who says i don't i'm just window shopping is it's also the guy who goes I'm not I'm I'm most important who is going to be the dude that's going to treat you the best because right. he has respect for himself. So right. he'll have respect for you. And it's true. And by the way, like you said, the, the good salesman who will say, I'm not doing anything right now. So, you know, we good. Right. What he's saying is I'm willing to invest a little bit here. Right. right. OK, right. because quite frankly, you are not an infringement upon my time. And so I'm willing to make a little investment because, quite frankly, I can see that there might be something here. Now, I've had that happen and then, uh, you know, saw something. I'm like, yeah, you know, here's I was I, I was in L.A. I was in Bloomingdale's. Right. Mm. I'm over in uh, uh, the men's section. They got this beautiful jacket. The jacket costs too much money. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I don't need it and I shouldn't be spending this money. Right. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, man, this is gorgeous, man. Right. So he goes, go ahead, man. You can try it on. I'm like, nah, man, that's too much money. I'm not going to buy it. And he went like this. Look, man, you look like the kind of dude that knows what you want. If you want to try it on, you want to try it on. If you don't, it's cool. But I'm, I can tell right now that you're not buying it. But if you want to try it on, I'll unlock it. Right. Uh, uh -huh. like, okay. So I try it on. And I'm like, oh, now my we talk God. about let's just be honest. It's a jacket that's locked on, locked oh. up. It's already it's locked up, which is which is says plenty. Hey, nobody's locking the champion sweat hoodie up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, you know, I put it on. I'm like, oh, my God. And it looks great. And then he goes, uh, yeah, I don't have to tell you it looks good like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm like, well, you're the salesman. You, 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 you do have to tell me. You know what it is. <laughs> so I said, you do have to tell me. He goes, no, nah, I don't have to tell you like that, right? <laughs> so uh, I, I go, somebody's walking down. I go, hey, hey, come here for a second. Come here, young lady. Come here, come here, come here for a second. All right, tell the truth. 100% honest. And she goes, oh, that is it. That is it. How That's much was the jacket, Chuck? How much was I, How much was the jacket? $3,600. <laughs> So anyway, was it was it leather? Was it front? What was it? Yeah, it's that you know that kind of um, I don't know how they did this, man, but it's like that really soft kind of the lamb. 
Yeah, it's, it's uh, like, lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, okay. And, yeah, but at the same time, it's really like strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Soft but strong. Yeah. It, it's weird. It was weird. It was beautiful. Anyway, long story short. Kind of like Harry. You know? <laughs> soft but beautiful. <laughs> soft and beautiful but soft, strong but, but strong, supple. But strong. That's true. So anyway, long story short, I go just like this. Yeah, man, that's too much money. I, I'm not doing this like that, right? So the dude goes like this, and this is how he's a good salesman. Hey, man, here's all my information, right? He goes like this. We work on commission. Just want to let you know. You change your mind about that, please give me a call. Or if you just ever need service when you come here, please just give me a call. Right? right? And then he goes like this. Even if, even if I'm not here, my cell phone's on there, it, I'll come in. And I'll just meet with you, right? Uh, let me say this. Now, let me, I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. So now you go home and that jacket is in your head. It's burning your scalp every day. Every day it's burning your, like it's, it's consuming your thinking. And you go back and go, you call the dude up, you give him the commission because that's the righteous thing to do. And you bought the $3,600 jacket. Of course. <laughs> but guess what? I didn't buy it until like, I don't know, I would I was living in L.A. Uh, I was there for four weeks. So I bought it three and a half, three, three weeks later. You know what I mean? But guess what? He didn't and care. The seats. No, no. He didn't care that it was three weeks later. And he, the deal was this. He wasn't trying to make a sale. Right. He was trying to be a good salesman. Right. And there is a huge Difference. Yeah, yeah. A huge difference. Well, I'll between... even go one one further. He was being a good human being. Yes. He was just being a good Which, human by being. By the way, is how you be the best salesman. Right. right. Don't let the sale become your focus. The focus. Don't let the sale let you be the focus. Right. Like what do I accomplish out of what I do for a living? How do I how do I actually help people? How do I actually that's how you become a really good salesperson? How do I listen to people? How do I provide solutions? This is what I'm truly here for. In the process, I end up making a shitload of money. Right, right. Keep going, wow, you're a good salesman. No, I'm a great human being. And that leads to a lot of good sales. For yeah. instance, I used to be a waiter. I made more money than anybody in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. you know why? And one day this guy finally said it. Chuck, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. You make more money than anybody here. Right. And you don't have as many tables. Right. And I said, That's because y'all trying to be waiters. I sell wine. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm not a waiter, bro. I'm a wine salesman. When people <laughs> come in for dinner, they want a great bottle of wine with their meal. I have researched our wine list. Many of these bottles I went and bought on my own because they won't allow us to taste them here. And so right. when people ask me about it, I'm able to speak to it. And then I tell them, if you don't like it, you know what? I'll see if I can get it take, taken off the bill for you. That's how, right. that's how sure I am. Right, that, right. But I'm not lying. I'm not right. trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to educate them and hit them to something. And guess what? So your bill comes out to $136, right? Mm -hmm. My bill comes out to $250 consistently. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So when they tip me, they tipping me on $250. When they tip right. you, they tipping you on $100. And they're also tipping you because they like you. Right. It's not just that they like they, it's not just that you they like the wine. And so I, Harry gets on me a lot of time because I go off. We, we talk and, and I go way off. And this is a relationship podcast. Sure. But what we're really talking about is this is what, what I mean. And maybe sometimes I think what I'm saying is a little cryptic for wow, we have five minutes of Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> it's so cryptic to, um, you know, it, it, it seems cryptic, but what I'm saying it is, is connected. It, I mean, in, in the in the fact that you are selling yourself always as a always. human being, always. Like, yeah, yeah, right. whatever business what you think to, you're in, I'm you're sorry, in sales. You off, Harry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm saying whatever business you that, that's that old saying, whatever business you think you're in, you're actually in sales. So it in the you, you're in the you business, really. Yeah. And yeah, you're the product and right. you're the product. Right. You um, are in the you business and you are the product. And so, you know, one, that means, you know, Figure out what that you is. What do you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Dante yeah. knows me long enough to know that, you know, I was, you know, about 30 pounds heavier. I, I was just going to say this. I Here's what I remember. 
106th Street, the the underground lounge, right? Yes. Um, I I think I even think Joey Gay was there, or or, or and it was some, but you you Chuck. Chuck's career, I mean, you had done radio, but it wasn't really, but you, Chuck had a hoodie on, he had a gray hoodie on, he had Chuck's on, he was 30, 40 pounds over, the hoodie was up, it was, it was a, you were a different dude, right? Well, well, yeah, I was. And, and then Chuck lost the weight, and then, and, and it's funny because you, the pendulum swang, like Chuck used to wear nothing but European fitted suit, like he was suited and booted, every, or, or, like there was this change. And, and I would think even your career wasn't in a great place because it, you could just feel your, and I remember you were chain smoking too. Yep. We're in it and just and drinking and chain smoking and and just hoodie on and ch we were both at this shit room uptown. Yeah. And then the next time I saw you was suited and booted, Italian suits, uh, you know, Ferragamos and 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 I just and then all of a sudden Chuck's career took it 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 took off because Chuck was loving himself. And the, and I say this all the time, people, we go, we, we, we do this thing where if you meet somebody and you go, oh, they don't like me, they don't like me. What happens is this person doesn't know you. They don't even know you enough to not like you. That's right. What you're yeah. ultimately. So how do they get to know you? You tell them. You tell them in your the way you dress. You tell them the gait of your walk. You tell them in your posture. You tell them where you groom, what you drink, what you do, the shoes you wear, how you speak, the cadence of your voice. When you are kind and, and you take care of you, you are telling people that you have value. You are telling women announcing it and it's not even intentional it's i am taking care of myself because i have value and because i have value this is why i take care of myself so it's a, a 3600 dollar jacket is what i deserve it's what i deserve it's not for you it's not for the point of 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 getting you because I can get you. That's easy. But I'm taking care of me. And th and that communication of that is the thing that we um that that I don't think that guys understand. I, yeah, I, I know it sounds corny, like nah, love it's yourself not corny at all. It doesn't sound corny. I mean, it might sound foreign to some dudes. All right. But if you think that what you, what 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 if anyone thinks that what you just said is corny, then I can tell you right now, things are not going the way they want things to be going. Sure, sure. I, 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 don't have to, I don't have to know you. All I know right now is if you just listen to what you just said and you think that that's corny, I guarantee you that things in your life are not what you want them to be. Right. Period. Right. Okay? And part of the reason why things are not the way you want them to be is because you think that that was corny. <laughs> hey, well, well, you know, so so just to go cover this, I mean, we we cover this like I mean, the the principle. So since you've been on the show, the you know, I have I have boiled it down to an acronym, what? which is ACE, right? Okay. ACE is authenticity, credibility and empathy. Right. So wow, I, I so authenticity, really truth. I'm truthful and I'm honest. Even when it's at my detriment, um, the, uh, or and it's really not in your detriment to be truthful anyway, because it all what it don't comes out and when it doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse anyway. There you go. So, so on right. credibility, I say what I mean. I mean what I say, I, and I and I don't I don't bullshit. I don't I don't do things in a in a way that's kind of sidebar to get this and empathy i understand that there are other people involved and they have feelings and i'm concerned about not being a dick or whatever so even when you talk about the wine story it's like these people are out to have a good time they want a good bottle of wine they want to enjoy themselves they want to enjoy you as a waiter when you come how you guys doing sis they want the, they want the experience and so that goes with the empathy and and when you when when you apply those things, it becomes so it, it's such a powerful thing. And, and I can't, and there's no other principle like I've like I'm always looking to shorten the, 
you know, shorten the um the 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 the, the pathway to to be more intentful and and less wasteful. First, let's let's shut this down. We're gonna do just shut it down, and we're gonna do another half hour behind the Patreon. Um, real quick, plug whatever you want to plug, and then we're gonna. Keep oh going. man, what am I plugging? I don't know. And if you're in New York City, you see me on a club at a club every weekend somewhere. Uh, and I'm the new host of um, uh, Brain Games on uh, Nat Geo and Disney. Oh, dope, Plus. man, dope, dope, yeah, dope. They just announced that I'm the new host of that. Uh, That's that awesome, was, bro. Keegan Michael Key was the host last year, and I'm the host this year. Dope, dope. Uh, hopefully, the host next year and the year <laughs> after. <laughs> and if not, it'll be something and better. If not, right. Um, and um, I have a podcast called Not So Nice Advice that I do once a year. So, but there are old episodes. Go listen to it. All right. Okay. So, mm. Sign up for it so that you know if you sign up for it because I'm. Gonna I want to do it. Go, I've never done it. I want to do it when you if you oh if God, you do you it again. Be great on it. So here's the podcast. Uh, I read advice columns and blogs. I tell you why that's the wrong answer, and then I give you the real answer. <laughs> nice. Very nice. All right. That's the um, podcast. I would love to have you on. It'd be great. Let's do it. Whatever you want. Social media. What's your social media real quick? Uh, at Chuck Nice Comic everywhere. At okay. Chuck Nice Comic. Okay. Uh, Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, you go at Harry Turjanian. That's where all my info is. At HarryTurjanian.com. Um, and uh, we're going to we're gonna do the Patreon, but real quick, everything Dante Nero. DanteNero.com if you want a consultation with me one-on-one. -on -one, you can call me, I'm, you know, from all over. GYBB, get your ball back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution being podcasted. We are out. Um, don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. This is We're going to keep this discussion behind the scenes. Uh, you want a piece of that? Yo, sign up, sign up and, and, and support us because we've been supporting y'all forever. So let's get it. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.